That isn't a beverage. That's alien soup accompanied with remorse. The scene took place in the galactic mesh hall aboard the United Species Space Station, where members of various alien species interacted. The majority of them were still skeptical of humans, as they were the newest addition to the Interstellar Council, and nobody really understood how Earth had even been admitted. On that day, humans had gathered for what was supposed to be a peaceful lunch with their alien counterparts, but it was anything but normal. Corporal Reynolds had barely finished speaking when the rest of the table fell into a stunned silence. Since Ilari faces were difficult to read, everyone assumed that the Ilari offering the drink was grinning. Reynolds, who was always the one to start chaos, looked down at the glass that an Ilari member had placed in front of him. It appeared harmless to an outsider, a little neon sure and bubbling in ways that no liquid should, but harmless. The Ilari were known for their strange food culture, eating things that other species wouldn't even dare touch. There is a claim that the molecule density might enhance one's senses. Reynolds refused to let any of that stop me from drinking. Zero's numerous eyes blinked in uncertainty as Reynolds moved his half-full cup of water toward the alien. You're not actually going to drink that, said Tack, the huge reptile from the Scallon military, who was seated across the table. His scaly face showed more anxiety than any alien face should. Reynolds lifted the glass, stirred the boiling liquid, and heard the buzzing voice of his friend Human Zero. I am legally obligated to notify you that this beverage is not appropriate for your biology and may result in mutations, stomach pains, and temporary death. I understand that Reynolds cut him off, but it's okay. You know the death, I'm from Earth. With a smirk, Reynolds said, your planet is full of creatures that try to kill you every day. World Tro squirmed uncomfortably in his seat. Before someone stops him, this drink has no chance. Reynolds slammed his lips, saying, not bad, as he wiped his mouth with the back of his hand. It tastes like burning rubber mixed with bad decisions, but hey, I've had worse. There was a moment of silence as all the aliens in the area waited for him to implode, explode, or perhaps just melt into the floor. The aliens around the table looked at one another, each more perplexed than the others. Once again, Zero's voice buzzed. It seemed dubious just now, but there ought to be quick consequences. Oh, their Reynolds smile was too big for anybody to find comfortable. That is not a good human being. I can feel my heartbeat in my eyelashes, and it's sort of wonderful. Reynolds sat back in his chair as if he had just had a drink of casual lemonade. Calm down, I've been through worse, Reynolds said, and I'll be fine, but he wasn't fine in the conventional meaning of the term. His face started to become a little unsettling shade of red, and he seemed to be in danger. His fingertips seemed to crackle with sparks. When Zero bent his head, or rather, his whole gelatinous body, in the direction of Reynolds, the other aliens seated around the table leaned back anxiously, uncertain if they were seeing the beginning of a human superpower or the last moments of a stupid death. Are you glowing? Reynolds shrugged neatly, noting that this material came with a light show. He looked down at his arms, which now shimmered slightly as if his skin was catching the light in odd ways. Zero buzzed an alarm, which isn't what was supposed to happen. Reynolds waved him away, obviously unconcerned, everything is fine. I've really been struck by lightning twice before, so this is nothing. The Scallon warrior, who had formerly taken great satisfaction in his fortitude, now seemed to be on the verge of fainting from secondhand fear. People are crazy. With his tail swishing uneasily under the table, Tack muttered to himself. Reynolds decided that now was a good time to play tricks on the increasing number of people watching. He straightened his chair, flexed his fingers, and said, You know, I think I could run around the entire space station right now twice, maybe do some push-ups along the way. Zero's eyes widened, and his voice buzzed in disbelief that you shouldn't be able to move. Reynolds felt the strange liquid settle in his stomach, or at least somewhere in the general area. Reynolds chuckled, Oh, I can move all right. In fact, I think I could easily defeat a fleet of space pirates. A group of onlookers who had been silently observing from the corner gasped, and some of them thought he was real. I'm going to need medical assistance. This is beyond Yari's comprehension, Zero mumbled, 
his gelatinous body trembling. Come down, Zero. Reynolds replied, getting up a little too soon for the comfort of the alien. The mess grew quiet as everyone's attention was drawn to the image of a human being who should have been rendered incompetent by the alien liquid but appeared to be preparing for a marathon. I swear I can feel colors when Reynolds said, his voice much too excited for the circumstances. I'm completely fine, just maybe a little tingly. Before seeing TR's scaly face, has anybody ever really been depressed? Confused, what exactly does it mean? Reynolds smiled just as the station's medical staff hurried into the mess, their faces showing a mix of shock and panic. Despite having been briefed on the situation, none of them appeared to know what to do with a glowing, active person who appeared completely unaffected by what was allegedly a toxic drink. One of the medical staff members said, Sir, approaching carefully, you need to lie down immediately. Reynolds waved them away, saying, No, I'm fine. If it will help you feel better, I'll do some push-ups. The medical officer did push-ups and blinked. Reynolds fell to the ground and started doing push-ups like his life depended on it. He counted aloud 20 and 30. In the rear, Zero mumbled to no one in particular, How am I not dead? The medical staff looked, the aliens around the table were stunned, and none knew the truth, but this was just the start of the mayhem that would follow. By the time the group of aliens around Reynolds doubled in size, he had completed 60 push-ups. Some of them were whispering among themselves, while others had their appendages on what could only be described as recording equipment. Wide-eyed and shocked, the medical staff, despite their confusion, could only watch and exchange anxious looks from time to time. 70 to 80 zero was vibrating in place, the Elari equivalent of pacing, and Reynolds' numerous eyes darted from him to the increasingly worried medics. This is not possible, Reynolds said. No other species could withstand the drink for more than 30 seconds, his organs should be shutting down. One of the medics cautiously stepped forward to address the human who was now jumping. Jax for no apparent reason please, Corporal Reynolds, we must do a thorough diagnosis. Although the benefits of that Yulari drink may not be felt right away, they are known to take time to manifest. This Reynolds halted mid-jump and was still flashing softly, demonstrating how powerful it is. He paused, looking down at his hands, which were now faintly sparkling. I've had coffee stronger than this stuff, and I'm not even jittery. Maybe a little jittery, but nothing major, he said. The alien medic, a tall insectoid creature with far too many legs for anyone's comfort, extended a scanner toward him. At least let me check your vitals. The medic's mandibles clicked in frustration as Reynolds gently slapped the scanner away, saying, No need for that, I feel great. In fact, I feel like I could run straight through a bulkhead. That's exactly what we're worried about, Tack, who had been watching this spectacle with a mixture of horror and fascination leaned in close, his reptilian eyes narrowing human. This is not a challenge you need to win, no one here is questioning your strength, Reynolds said, flashing a grin, but now I'm doubting it. I must notify the station's leadership that this person is turning into a danger since Zero had slithered over to the closest console and was typing frantically as track scales shook in what could only be characterized as worry that is not comforting. If that drink alters his biochemistry, his body might suddenly collapse catastrophically. Zero unwinds Reynolds extended his neck and added, Trust me, if my body is telling you that mutation isn't happening today. Didn't close after devouring a petrol station that was five days old. Your drink won't make much of a difference. What is sushi? The alien gazed at him in blankness. Track inquired carefully, as if he was afraid of the raw fish response. Reynolds said that sometimes waving a hand skillfully is more like suggesting that you don't want to ask too many questions. People voluntarily eat raw, possibly dangerous food, yet he seemed to be about to faint and. Remarkable accomplishment for a seven-foot-tall, armored reptile danger Reynolds laughed, hadn't as half the fun. What would life be without a little danger? Zero's voice crackled over the MES, and the whole mess hall fell into horrified quiet. The aliens, who had before shown little concern about the human's reputation, were now nervously backing away as if Reynolds could suddenly explode. Human physiology might collapse at any time, 
therefore we need to be ready for evacuation protocols in case of a containment breach. Hall's communication system is louder than required. I've sent out a station-wide notice. Shaking his head, Reynolds sneered, I'm not an explosive. His knees suddenly wobbled, and he slipped and caught himself on a table's edge. The whole room gasped, and a physician murmured, oh no. Reynolds blinked and his vision swayed a little. Whoa, maybe I should take a moment to sit down. Zarek was already buzzing loudly, the drink was finally taking effect. Everyone should stay back because this could go horribly wrong, but before anyone could react, Reynolds steadied himself and shook his head. Nope, it was a false alarm. Zero's gelatinous form deflated a little. You are playing with galactic health regulations. With a sheepish smile, Reynolds said, Hey, I can't help it if I'm built differently, but really, don't panic, I'm fine. The audience didn't appear to believe that some aliens were retreating toward the exit. The head medic, still holding his now useless scanner, sighed wearily, this is beyond anything we've seen before. You should be unconscious or worse. While others had removed what appeared to be emergency masks, Scallon remained peaked and had the closest exit with mild suspicion. Reynolds laughed and sprang to his feet, smacking the table. No. I told you that I'm tougher than I look, and in addition to that, I'll just walk it off if anything really goes wrong," he said, winking at Turok. You can't just walk off genetic destabilization, he repeated, his voice full of incredulity. Reynolds will find out, I suppose. At this point, Zero's patience, or what little of it the Ilari had left, had vanished sufficiently. You humans must be placed in isolation until we are certain you won't blow up or Zero stopped and his eyes widened at something. Beyond Reynolds, Reynolds turned to see what all the commotion was about, but before he could comprehend what was going on, the automatic warning system of the station blared over the speakers, alerting him to the discovery of an unknown life form in the mess hall. Reynolds arched an eyebrow and said, Wait, what? I didn't bring any pets aboard. His scales pricked up as he surveyed the room wondering what kind of life was there. Reynolds scratched his temples and realized that it wasn't the drink that was the source of the problem. Zero's voice was buzzing with frustration. Reynolds, what have you done? Reynolds looked at the ceiling as the station's sirens blared, warning of some mystery intruder, and the lights flashed in rhythmic pulses, creating an ominous red glow across the mess hall. Reynolds just smiled, oh, trust me, I haven't even started yet. While some brave or just inquisitive aliens hid behind tables, others hurried toward the exits. Reynolds smirked and said, there must be some sort of mix-up Trevor. The practical one was not amused, and if anything harmful has entered the station, it is serious. One remained behind, looking in wonder at the still glowy person who had caused this mayhem. If it's anything like the Ilari drink. I just finished, it's probably nothing I can't handle, Reynolds said interrupting his cracking of his knuckles. Zero's many eyes glistened in a mixture of panic and disbelief. Are you implying that you are the cause of this? Did you bring a dangerous creature on board? Look, Zero. Reynolds started, but the floor trembled severely under them before he could continue, and the station's voice bellowed over the mess hall once again, warning keeping things contained repeat of the breach at MES Hall 7 breach of containment Reynolds Zero and Tack turned to look at the mess. At first glance, there was nothing at Hall's entrance as the double doors hissed open. Reynolds squinted and took a step forward, but then it struck him, or rather, it wobbled into view. The creature was small, barely bigger than a house cat, but it glowed faintly, its body shifting and pulsating like a jellyfish on dry land. It had no distinguishable face or limbs, just a mass of translucent goo that was oozing toward them. Tro retreated, his massive tail flicking nervously. What is that? Reynolds squatted down, eyeing the little blob with curiosity. It looked like a space jelly, kind of cute in a weird semi-threatening way. Zero was vibrating again, his voice shrill, that is a van plasmid. Before anybody could stop him, Reynolds broke off reaching out as if to touch the creature. No, this little guy is just misunderstood, Reynolds said. No van plasmids attach to anything they touch, 
so when Reynolds scooped the creature into his hands, it wobbled, emitting a faint glow and making a soft gurgling sound that may have been the closest thing it had to a purr zero. The creature's gelatinous form trembled with fear. Reynolds glanced down at his arms, where the plast mid was now comfortably seated bond. Yes, you mean that it attaches to things, but that's not the worst thing that's happened to me this week. My scales shook in panic, and it's not just sticking, it may even become a part of you as it merges with its host. A portion of me was forever blinking by Reynolds. Once again, sorrow buzzed. Yes, permanently, which is why they are temporarily contained. Reynolds just stared at the pulsating creature in his hands before shrugging, well, I guess I've got a new pet. The entire mess hall fell silent, and even the aliens who had fled to the corners of the room were now watching Gape's mouths as if they thought the plasmid would swallow Reynolds at any moment. The plasmid didn't appear to have any plans to eat him, but it just sat there happy and glowing softly. Zero, obviously unable to handle the absurdity any longer, slithered toward a nearby console. I must notify the authorities because this breach cannot go unreported. Zero, calm down. Reynolds shook his head and said, You are insane, human, emphasizing that the plasmon was still in his hand and that it was just hanging out at a safe distance. Reynolds grinned as he put the plasmon on the table, causing it to sway in circles like a bewildered jelly bean. The station AI containment's soothing voice abruptly replaced the alarms that had been blasting continuously. All personnel were neutralized by the breach. May start up normally. Zero's eyes flickered neutralizing the fact that this couldn't be true. The plasmid is in good condition. Reynolds patted the blob lovingly sees no wrongdoing the alien continued to seem doubtful, but it appeared that the threat, if there had ever been one, had gone. As he slithered back to his workstation to submit what would surely be a mound of paperwork, Zero kept muttering to himself. You really don't have any sense of self-preservation, do you? Tro slowly walked up to the table and had the plasmid. Reynolds chuckled, saying that self-preservation is overrated. In addition, what could possibly go wrong at that very moment? The plasmid wobbled once again and made a low-pitched chirping sound. Reynolds took a quick look at it before turning back to T. Rock's smile grows as he says, Hello, crossing his arms and shaking his head. Humans are impossible, he says. You have to admit that we make things interesting, Reynolds replied reclining back in his chair with obvious pride. The mess hall gradually returned to normal, with the aliens reluctantly going back to their meals. They would probably talk about the strange scene that had just happened for weeks, but for the time being, it seemed like the crisis was over. Zero, who was still complaining, gave Reynolds one more glance. This is not very human, there will be queries and reports, and your behavior will be looked at. As the aliens continued their meal, Reynolds shrugged, which to me seemed like a normal Tuesday. Reynolds then reclined in his chair and watched the plasmid bounce. It chirped once more, maybe as a sign of happiness, and illuminated faintly around the table, pulsing in time with the station's quiet hum. Hey T-Rope, do you ever wonder what would happen if you fed a plasmid Ilari soup? Reynolds yelled, leaning forward with a cheeky GLL in his eye. TR's eyes widened in fear, but don't even consider it. Person, but it was already too late. Because that was what it meant to be human, Reynolds was already smiling and prepared for his next absurd and probably dangerous adventure. Curiosity, a total disdain for galactic conventions, and all of that turmoil weren't enough to keep the aliens alert.